Hi guys, I'm Bobsy, and in this video we're going to be looking at how we spawn and despawn objects over the network. So, to get started, I just set up an object to spawn uh, prefab. This is just a very basic sphere, scaled down a little bit, and it has the network object script on it. This is very important, else we can't act with it over the network. Now, I've also just set up uh, a little bit of an extra scene, but this doesn't actually change anything, it just makes it nicer to look at. Now, let's go into scripts and make a new script. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to have the player spawn the object, so I'm just going to call it player spawn object. And we might as well add this script immediately to the player. Now, let's open up the script. And in here, we're going to need some basic setup as per usual. So, we're going to be using fishnet that object and we're also going to be making the script into a network behavior. Now as in our other scripts as well, both with the column network and the player controller, we need to disable the script for all the other players because we don't want it to, we only want it to be active on our local player. So we are going to make a public override void on start client. And in here we're just gonna run an if and then saying base.is owner, which basically means if we're not the owner of the script, we want to disable it. So I'm going to get a component player spawn object dot enable equals to false. Right, so first of all, we want a reference to the game object that we're going to be spawning. So I'm going to do a public game object and then let's just call object to spawn. And then we also want a public game object where we can hold the object. So let's just call this spawned object. And just for simplicity's sake, let's make it a hide and inspector, which just means it's not going to show for us in the inspector because we have no need to actually see this. The reason why it's public is because we might want to reference it from other scripts. Now, in the update function, let's set up uh, two if statements, the spawning and the despawning of this object that we're going to spawn. So first of all, we're going to say if the spawn object is equal to null, which means we haven't spawned anything or we don't have an object spawn, and input that get key down and let's just for our sake use key code dot, let's say alpha one uh, which basically just means if we press the button one on the keyboard or the number one we're going to be running this and let's make the same uh, function but just saying if it is not null and we'll press the button two this means we have spawned the object so we have a spawned object and this is why we want to despawn it so first of all let's focus on spawning the object um, we want to do this through a server RPC. You always want to spawn objects via the server. Uh, and let's just call this public void spawn object. And we need the local client to send some information to the server, such as what object should it spawn. So let's do a game object, let's call it object or OBJ. We also want to know, because I just want to spawn it in front of the player, so we also want to send the player's transform immediately. And to be able to set this via the network, we also need a reference to this script. So let's do player spawn object and just call it script. Now, first of all, we want to instantiate the object as you've always done. It. So let's just do game object and call it spawn. And then we use the instantiate command as you know from normal Unity. And we're going to be instantiating the OBJ. And then we want to instantiate in front of the player. So we're going to do player position plus player default. And in, we also just need a rotation, so I'm just going to do returning to identity. And now this is where we want to spawn it over the network. So we want to do server manager dot spawn, and then we want to spawn the spawn object. So what we basically do is we spawn it locally, and then we spawn it for every other player. And it will actually just keep the information of the position and the rotation. And now the last thing that we need is to be able to set the spawn object so we have a reference for it to be able to delete it later. The way that we want to set this is we need to use an observers RPC. So I don't know if you watched the last video. If you haven't, you should go watch that. The observers RPC pretty much just sends it out to every observer that this uh, function is going to be run for everyone. So in this case, let's just call it public void set spawned object. And in this, we also need a few references. So we need to reference once again the uh, object or the spawned object. So for simplicity's sake, let's call it spawn. And then once again, we want to keep the reference to the script. And script like so. And now we can just run it as per normal here. So we're going to set spawn object and we're going to send in spawn. Oh, whoops. Spawn. And we're going to send in this script. And then down here, in the script, we're going to be set 
setting the spawn object uh, equals to the spawn which we're sending through. So I hope this makes sense to you. I'm just gonna explain it one more time. If this makes sense, just skip ahead in the video. In case it doesn't, what we're doing is we are from the player up here going to be sending the spawn object command and we're gonna be sending the obj to spawn, the transform and this. So this is how we call the command. So what we do is when we press the button one now, we're gonna run this uh, function on the server because it's a server RPC. Now what the server is going to be doing is it's gonna spawn the object that we're referencing and it's gonna take into account the player which is referencing it. So it's spawning it in front of his position. And then it makes sure to grab the script which is sending the command or sending the function rather, sorry. Uh, and making sure that in that uh, dedicated script, it's setting the spawned object. Um, I hope this makes sense. If it doesn't, please just let me know how I could maybe explain it better. Uh, let me know in the comments. Now, let's go test just spawning it. And right now, we're not testing it necessarily over the network. Let's just go test that it's spawning properly. Oh, uh, we of course need to set up the object to spawn in here. So I'm just gonna try and drop that. And let's start playing. And when I press the button one, you can see I've spawned the object. And if I press one again, nothing happens. That means the reference is working as well. So if we just quit out of this now, we just need to make the despawning of the object. So this also needs to be done via a server RPC. But now something I didn't explain to you is that when you spawn objects, you can actually spawn them with ownership. So if we write comma, and then you can actually uh, reference, as it says right here, you can reference the network connection or the owner's connection. But in our case, we're not doing that. This would technically actually make sense with what we're doing right now, but it just adds another layer um, and we're referencing the object uh, differently. Now, because we're not necessarily the owner of the object, there is no ownership. What we want to make sure when we run a server RPC that's gonna, um, gonna affect that or modify this object that has no ownership necessarily, we wanna make sure that we write require ownership false because then the server RPC can manage the object anyway. So we're gonna make it a public void and we're gonna call it despawn object. And of course, the only thing it really needs to know is what object to despawn. So let's just game object object. And now we run the server manager dot despawn and we give it the object and that's it. This is how you despawn it. So if we go up here, we can just run the despawn object uh, command. And we're gonna give it the spawn object from our script, which is the reference that we're setting here. So the way this works now is we're spawning it uh, we're spawning it on the server. We're setting it in the script that we've spawned this and which object it is down here. And now when we're despawning it, we're sending that object that we're setting here, which we just spawned, and we're being able to despawn it by the press of number two. So I'm gonna save this and let's try and build it. So now I've built the game. You can see the other player over here. On, uh, on this player, which is only the client, I can spawn it and I can't spawn anymore. And if I press two, I can despawn it again. So now I can keep spawning it, despawning it right where I want. And if I now go to the other client, you'll be able to see the spawned object over here. Now if I press two, I cannot despawn that object, but if I press one, I can spawn my own. And I can also despawn that one. So this is basically how it works. I hope this was somewhat helpful to you guys. I know this can get a bit confusing, but trying to cram this into a short video is a little bit difficult. So if you have any questions, feel free to write a comment. And also I've set up a Discord community. The link will be in the description. So we're able to help each other out and you're more able to interact with me directly. Other than that, a like and a subscription is much appreciated and have a wonderful day.